Okay. Hello. Uh, uh, my name is Murilo Marchioro. I'm, uh, I'm a professor of biophysics at the University of Sergipe in Brazil. And uh, tonight I'm here with Dr. Ulisse Di Corpo, uh, who is a psychologist and a statistician. And uh, he's going to talk to us about the syntropy. It's a very interesting phenomenon that uh, is related to many aspects of the, I would say, the uh, knowledge, or human knowledge. So, thank you very much for the interview, Dr. Okay, it's uh, a pleasure. And uh, I would start asking you, what, what, what is syntropy? Uh, and uh, what is the origin of this word? Well, um, the word syntropy comes from Greek. Syn means converging and tropos tendency. The word was coined in 1941 by a mathematician, Luigi Fantapier, uh, to describe the properties of the backward in time energy. Um, in the fundamental equations, we have two types of energy. One that diverges from the past towards the future, which is what we commonly uh, are used to, or we know that it's, for example, light, heat, you have a cause and there is energy that diverges. And there is in the equations also another type of energy that diverges from a cause which is in the future. The second type of energy was considered to be impossible because they said, well, the future doesn't exist. So how can we have energy that diverges from the future towards the past? But uh, Fantapie working on the properties of this equation uh, he could recognize uh, in the backward in time energy exactly the mysterious properties of life, which is energy concentration, increase in differentiation, structure, complexity. And so he said, well, I, I can see uh, uh, these properties in life. Um, probably this backward in time energy is real and exists. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. You, you, you are talking about uh, uh, time and energy, so it's physics, but you are also talking about biology. So, syntropy is, seems li like a general property of nature? Yes, well, um, what Fantapier wrote in 1942 was a book that he titled The Unitary Theory of the Physical and Biological World because he could see the uh, physical world described uh, by the forward in time uh, energy that is governed by the law of entropy. That means that we go towards energy dissipation, we go towards chaos and the destruction of any type of differentiation. And uh, in the same equation, we have this uh, backward in time energy that instead describes uh, the properties of life. So, in, in his opinion, uh, uh, the, these two aspects were part of the same unity of reality. Mm -hmm. Reality as a forward in time tendency mm -hmm. and a backward in time tendency. Mm -hmm. well, well, speaking about biology, the most important theory is evolution. So, yes. in your opinion, what's the relationship between syntropy and evolution? Well, uh, you know, future uh, causes uh, are named attractors. So, according to this uh, idea of syntropy, life is um, moved, is attracted, it goes towards these attractors. So, life is not really caused by the past but it is caused by the future. Now, attractors have very special properties because they are, um, say, non-local, uh, since the information can move instantaneously uh, when we're talking about backward in time energy. And another property is entanglement, that it uh, brings together all the individuals that in a way are related to this uh, attractor. That means that if we are um, connected, say, to the attractor uh, human being, all our individual experiences uh, arrive to this attractor. 
and being the attractor citropic, it selects all what it is beneficial for uh, our species. And uh, so it, um, evolution is seen more like something that is driven by the future. We are converging towards uh, an attractor that is located in the future. And it's not so much, uh, um, say, based on chance. Uh, um, as it usually is considered to be evolution uh, or natural selection. Yes. Uh, and uh, well, we have been reading and um, uh, some uh, research related syntropy with spirituality or synchronicity. What do you have well, to say? Well, uh, um, now uh, we cannot see the future. Uh, so, uh, according to these uh, fundamental equations, the reality we are in is half visible and material, and half is invisible, and it is linked to the properties of life. For example, consciousness is not visible, but it's something that we all continuously experience. And uh, we would therefore have uh, two different ways to perceive the reality. One is uh, through physical senses, and the other one is instead, uh, um, it links to this invisible side of reality. And the way how it works is that since syntropy is converging energy that concentrates and the uh, vital functions are supported by the autonomic nervous system, the autonomic nervous system should uh, continuously receive this energy and when we receive it, we feel warmth and well-being. Warmth because it's converging energy and well-being because the living functions are well supported by this energy. So when we are going towards the attractor, we feel warmth and well-being. When we're diverging, we feel emptiness, void and suffering. Now, these feelings that are located in this heart area mm -hmm. would be in a way the portal, the way that allows us to connect to the invisible world. Mm -hmm. So also to the invisible energies that are around us and, uh, and, and that is linked to spirituality. Mm -hmm. Now the other point is that the attractor uh, has effects on the present. But when we see these effects in the present, we're not able to explain them because the cause is in the future. So we see things that happen together like coincidences, mm -hmm. but since there is a cause in the future that is behind them, uh, they, they are meaningful coincidence, coincidences. And um, and that is an uh, important part of uh, syntropy, oh, this uh, oh. synchronicity. That's very interesting. And now, well, nowadays you don't see much papers or scientific researches on syntropy. Do you have an explanation for that? Is there some, uh, you know, uh, thing with the academy? Well, well uh, you know, in the academy world, or at least here in Italy, you cannot go against the dogma of cause and effect. Causes must always precede their effects. And uh, usually whoever introduces a different type of ca causality, in this case we talk about retrocausality, uh, a causality that moves backward in time, it is not accepted. And especially it is not accepted when you bring experimental uh, proofs about the existence of this retrocausality. So that is in general um, what is happening in academia. But strangely, uh, it seems that this kind of negative approach towards syntropy is much broader. It's not limited only to the academia. Okay. Well, I have a uh, last question. Can you comment on on? other implications of syntropy in other uh, areas of uh, human knowledge or research? Well, I, you know, I think that syntropy is a kind of um, universal law that you can apply a bit everywhere. But in, uh, in a way, syntropy could be linked to what a lot of people 
called life energy. Now, the West has been working mainly on causality, and uh, the Western culture is very mechanistic and materialistic, while the East, for example, if we get Asia or China, they have been always working on life energy, what they call the Qi and the Tao, and, uh, and they have an approach which is totally different from our approach. And in my opinion, the fact that we find these two type of uh, ideas uh, in the same equation, we find entropy and syntropy uh, uh, as complements of the same unity could help us to unify, to bring together the Western tradition and the uh, culture that we mm -hmm. find in Asia. Okay. Well, thank you very much for the interview, and, and I'd like to thank you also, your wife, Antonella Vaninic, that I know that uh, gathered very interesting data on physiology linked to syntropy. Yes, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you a lot.